This is Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge and in this video I'm going to show you how to create some retro comic book artwork using my vintage comic creator in Affinity Designer. This authentic looking toolkit features real seamless comic book textures, um, ink outline brushes, distressed overlays and bonus comic book shapes. That's everything you need to create your own retro comic book artwork. As you can see I'm working in one of the textural overlay documents that comes with the pack. Um, in this document you have three different overlays which you can turn off and on as required. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this layer here and place a new layer at the bottom and then I'm going to place my rough. And now I'm ready to start creating my image. So firstly, I'm going to lock this rough layer and I'm going to knock out the textural overlays layer and lock that as well. And I'm just going to create a new layer above the rough and I'm going to place my outlines on here, which I'm going to create using the brushes here. So I'm selecting comic book standard five and I'm going to select the vector brush tool here and then I'm just going to use the spare brackets key to make the stroke a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to simply trace over the roughs there, just roughly. Because the great thing about vector brushes is you can adjust them after you've drawn the image. And you can also swap in for other brushes if you don't feel they look quite right. So I'm just going to refine them just a little bit by using the node tool here and just selecting the odd node and just dragging like so. Next I'm going to draw some of these blast lines and to do that I'm going to select some of the contrasting brush strokes here. Select the vector brush tool again and just click and draw like so. And say so I'll adjust them all as I go. Now I want to create the impression that we have a little bit more variety here so I'm going to swap in a few other brushes just to provide that. the outline's done. If you want to make any more tweaks later it's very easy as you can see. And let's get on to the next stage. So I'm going to lock the outlines layer as well and create a layer below onto which I'm going to draw an outline for this shell shape. I'm just going to simply use the pen tool to do that. Now I'm going to apply one of the textures to this shape. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to go to my styles tab and I'm just going to load up one of the styles and I want this aged paper texture here and to uh, apply it to the shape all I do is click it once. As you can see it's instantly applied. Now it's worth noting at this stage that when a style is applied to a shape it takes on the proportions of the shape. So any textures 
will be skewed slightly if the shape is not directly square. So um, to get around this, all we do is select the fill tool here and you have this L-shaped cursor which you can use to drag the texture around or to rotate it or change the size. But all we do to even out the proportions is double click one of the ends and it just automatically creates an equal sized square. Now I want to add some half tone areas around these edges here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this paper layer and I'm going to name it half tone and I'm going to knock out the original paper layer and I'm going to adjust the opacity of the half tone layer just so you can see below it. Now I'm going to create another shape which I'm going to use to erase a section of the original shape. So again, I'm going to select the pen tool here and I'm simply going to draw like we did before. going to adjust the color so we can see exactly where it is then I'm going to select both of these curves so I've already selected the top one and I'm holding down the shift key I'm holding down the shift key and I've selected the other curve as well I'm simply to go up to the top and click the subtract button here and as you can see you just have the outer bits here and there's a few little bits actually that I need to neaten up let's take those out There we are. Now we're going to apply another style to this shape. And I think we'll turn the paper shape back on first so you can see it working. And so we've got our curve selected and we can go to the styles panel again. And I'm going to select one of these half tone patterns like so. And I'm going to reproportion that as I did before. Uh, I think we'll make it all a little bit larger. And now I'm going to correct the mistake I made and delete this section here by just drawing another shape on top of it, which I'm going to use to erase it. I'll apply the same style and set it to roughly the same proportions. And I'm going to select both shapes again and use the subtract button. As I say, there's a few little bits I need to neaten up there. And there you go. I'm now going to add a third texture for the background. And so all I'm going to do is use the rectangle tool, just create a rectangle. As you can see, it uses the previous texture that I used. And I'm going to go back to my styles tab and just click on a style. I've got a slightly different purple, which I might try actually slightly. Yeah, that's better. Now I'm going to adjust the proportions. And there are all your textures. Now I'm locking all of these layers because I don't need to work on them for a while. And I'm actually going to knock them out so I can see the rough again. Because it's time to add the text. And I'm going to do this on a new layer. I'm just going to go above the outline layer. And I'll call that type. I'm going to use a font called Bangers which you can download free online. And it's free for personal and commercial use. Um, and you can find a link to this in the downloaded product file. So I'm going to use the frame text tool and I'm going to add a frame and simply type K. I'm going to select that and 
swap it in for my bangers font. And then I'm going to up the size considerably. That looks about right. Now I'm going to rotate it, maybe a tiny bit bigger. Then I'm simply going to duplicate. I'm clicking the Alt key and dragging. So we have multiple instances, one for each letter, like so. And then we're just gonna replace the letters. going to select all of these letters and I'm going to apply another style to them which is this green ink style here and again I'm just going to adjust the proportions like so you can do them all together which is really useful the next step is to duplicate each of these letters and I'm going to apply a stroke a black stroke to each of the duplicates and so we can identify the text, I'm just going to quickly rename each of these green. Okay, so now they're renamed, I'm going to just copy and paste each of these and the top instance, I will replace the word green with stroke. Now I'm going to select all of the stroke letters, like so, and I'm going to go back to my styles panel and I'm going to apply this stroke style here. And now I'm going to thicken up the stroke a little bit using the stroke panel here. And I'm just going to make sure the texture is in proportion. Now, you'll notice that the cursor didn't appear then, the L-shaped cursor, and that's because in the context menu here, we have fill selected. So I'm simply going to adjust it so it says stroke. And as you can see, the cursor just appears. So we'll adjust the proportions and up the size of the texture a little bit, like so. The next step is to create a sort of offset text effect. So it looks like the printing is slightly flawed which is a thing you would always get in old comic books. And so I'm going to duplicate each of the green letters again. And now I'm going to rename the bottom instance of the green type, paper. And you've probably guessed it by now, but I'm now going to select all of these paper layers like so. and I'm going to apply the paper style to them. So I'm going back to the styles panel and I'm going to load some of the fill styles and I'm simply going to click on the aged paper. And even though you can't actually see it at the moment, I'm just going to adjust the proportions and upsize it slightly. And as I said, you can't actually see the paper type at the moment. So I'm gonna shift the green type slightly. So I'm gonna select all of the instances again and simply nudge them slightly to the right and down a bit. And if I turn on all of the textures again, you can see that we're almost done. The pack comes with a set of handy um, shapes which you can just drag and drop into your document and these will hopefully save you a bit of time and so i'm going to knock out all of these layers so i can see the rough again i'm adding another new layer i'm going to name this stars and then i'm going to drag some of these useful shapes across so i'm going to the assets panel here 
And as you can see, you've got things like speech bubbles and flashes and a multi-part bomb that you can put in. But I'm just going to play some stars very quickly. So just a matter of dragging them in. Then resizing them and just placing them where you want. I'm now going to merge all of these stars into one compound shape and I'm going to do this by selecting all of them and then clicking add here. The reason I do this is so that when I apply textures to the uh, stars I'm not applying a different instance of each texture to every single star which would make my document huge. So it's the equivalent of just applying one texture all over all of the stars. And so before I add the textures I'm just going to make everything visible again and then we're just going to use this sort of orange style here like so and as before we're going to reproportion it now what we'd also like to see is a bit of a an offset look like we did on the type so we're just going to copy and paste and we'll rename these stars so we know which one's which so we have orange stars and we'll have paper stars. Now we're going to select the paper stars and again go back to the styles and click the edge paper style like so. And of course we're adjusting the proportion again and we're just going to nudge the paper stars down slightly just to create the impression that the print has gone slightly wrong. I'm now going to add um, an outline stroke to the stars so I'm going to copy and paste another instance of the stars and name it stars stroke and I'm going to my appearance panel here and I'm simply going to knock out the texture and I'm going to up the stroke size. Now I'm sure you've noticed that I have um, accidentally missed an area here, so I'm just going to quickly fill that in. Before I add the texture to the black elements, I'm just going to use some of the brushes to add a few more subtle outlines to imply movement. final tweaks and then we'll pretty much be done. to apply um, some texture to the outlines here. Um, I'm going to do it in a slightly different way to how I apply texture to the background and the half tone and the paper. Um, and the reason is that I want to apply one instance of the texture across all of the outlines rather than just doing it 
uh, brush, which would end up making my file huge. So I've got my outlines here. I'm going to select everything on the layer and I'm going to group it. And then I'm going to use the rectangle tool and I'm simply going to draw a large rectangle on top, making sure I cover every single outline of the outline group. Then I'm going back to my styles panel and I'm simply going to select one of the styles, then I'm going to reproportion it. And then I am going to select the group and I'm going to drag it on the layers panel into the thumbnail for the rectangle. But it's very important that you drag it into the image portion of the rectangle and not the text portion here. So watch what happens if I drag it into the text portion. It doesn't work. And if I drag it into the image portion, the texture is applied nice and evenly to all the outlines there. Now the second layer of outlines that we have here, I think they are small enough that we don't need to worry about applying texture to them. Um, but I'm just going to adjust the colour very slightly. So that they fit in better with the textures like so. I'm now going to group all of those and I'm going to copy and paste them. Then I'm going to select the bottom group and I'm going to recolor the bottom group strokes so that it looks roughly the same as the paper texture. Now I am just going to shift those outlines very slightly like I did the other outlines so they give the impression of an offset print look. There's one final thing for me to do here and that's to turn the textural overlays back on and this should give it its sort of realistic edge. And for this one I'm going to knock out the dark texture and just stick with the light texture. And there's my completed design. Make sure you check out the pack on artifactsforge.com um, and if you've got any questions just send me an email or leave a comment. Thanks for watching.